Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Ben 10 Unveiled. And it's been, Jesus, it's been three months since the Hex video, my bad. Before we get into the video, we're on the road to once again 2,000 subscribers, everybody. Think about subscribing if you like the video or just leave a like. Both help immensely with the push and pull of YouTube's algorithm. Venturing back into Ben 10, today I decided to talk about the alien crime fighting family, but specifically the father of our dear protagonist. So let's talk about Grandpa Max beginning, not much is known about the youth of Max Tennyson. Thanks to the classic Fountain of Youth episode, we definitely helped paint a picture of how he looked, but we only know Max spent every summer on his uncle Jebediah's farm as a child, having learned in his words a hard work ethic, though he admitted to have hated it as much as Ben and Gwyn did. Max also has a sister, though we have never had it had revealed which of them is older, as we never got an official age from Grandpa Max, but given we know that he was 18 to 20 when he joined the military, that being in the 60s, which puts Grandpa Max's age around 60 to 63, and his birth sometime in the early 50s, making Grandpa Max, yes, an official boomer. I draw this timeline conclusion not only based on Max's age, but also with the fact that the president at the time was in fact John F. Kennedy, and given Kennedy had a rather, um, abrupt exit from office, Max had to have been in the military between 1961 and 1963. Being voiced by Jason Marsden in his early adulthood before beginning The Plumbers, Max went on to become a United States Air Force pilot, with dreams of eventually joining NASA and going to the moon. An expert flyer, he was allowed to fly the F-104 Starfighter and was capable enough to pilot and shoot down an alien spacecraft. A note I'd like to include, the requirements for being an Air Force pilot may have been laxer in the 60s, but Max would have had to have had a rank of at least a commissioned or a non-commissioned officer. After shooting down his spacecraft, Max's plane raider for Mach 2 speeds failed under the stress of going near Mach 3. This led Max to being reprimanded by his superiors, until a general appeared asking Max of his experience with the UFO. We find Max had the top academic and combat training scores in the Air Force, amongst also having several incidents of insubordination, though he stated it was only when his superiors were wrong, and participation in brawls or fights, having his ethics described at best as situational. This, ironically, along with President Kennedy wanting the military to strengthen itself and be ready for outside invasions from aliens, we find out that Max is a top candidate for being an astronaut. And on a weekend out celebrating, at a diner, Max meets Verdona, the future mother of his children, and after an encounter with a sentient robot known as the Synthroid, a bar fight, and a subsequent car chase, high impact crash, Max and Verdona set a trap for the android, and we learn along with being an expert driver, Max is stealthy enough to get the drop on the body and sever its arm, ultimately leading to a whole Terminator situation with the robot in my opinion. This robot, as I stated earlier, was a Synthroid, a race of sentient inorganic beings that had once overthrown their creators. The Synthroid had kidnapped Verdona and intended to use their anodite status and power to fuel his planet for years. This does speak on how powerful anodites truly are and how much energy or mana they have as to fuel an entire robotic space frame. Race to civilization for years is an impressive feat for any power source. I personally believe that Max as a human being possessed a high amount of inborn mana or natural life force as Verdona in her older age claimed that Max had the spark and in her younger years claimed Max had been the one she had been searching for. This perhaps can explain the following we see in Grandpa Max that fuels his even in old age impossible actions. We get our very first strength feat as Max with a crowbar severely damages the robot's outer armor plating, which I believe as not of Earth was something an average man with a crowbar could not do. After a brief struggle, Max, through the arrived help of good old Magister Lagrid, self-destructs the Synthroid ship and saves Radona, having to reject her offer for the stars. That next day, Max joined the astronaut program and was set to be the first man in on the moon, ahead of Neil Armstrong, actually, but was recruited by Magister Lagrid to become a plumber with the actual story of his family life with Radona, unfortunately never being fully disclosed, though as stated earlier, they had Ben and Gwen's fathers, Carl and Frank, which led to Ben, Gwen, and Ken. Moving into the silver years of Grandpa Max, voiced by Paul Eating, Magister Maxwell Tennyson, or Grandpa Max as his grandchildren call him, cause you know, Grandpa Max taught us all lessons, so we're kinda his pseudo grandchildren, is a man with a keen sense for adventure, fashion, and strange taste in exotic food. During the original series, Max takes the kids on a summer road trip across the United States traveling in his motorhome nicknamed the Rust Bucket, which he has modified with advanced technology from his days as a plumber. And the rust bucket has even been rebuilt, though the original had a top speed of 300 miles per hour and even got more souped up in the negative 10 special by Cooper. During his plumber days, it's reported that Max rose to the rank of Magister before retiring. 
which in the plumbers means Max had attained the level of jurisdiction putting him in charge of the entire quadrant. Max was, is, the mentor of Ben, Gwen, Kevin, Cooper, the plumbers helpers, and likely countless other in and out of action plumbers while he considered the greatest plumber in the Milky Way. Despite Max's sensational reputation throughout the stars, his job didn't necessarily allow him to be a family man, often being away in what Ben's dad referred to as plumbing jobs. It's explained that his son's Ben's father, most vocally, despised the life his father lived and resented him for being away. While counter, Gwen's dad had an actual knowledge of the Anodite heritage and kept magic from Gwen until Verdona came back, meaning he also had a knowledge of Aelin. And at some point in his life as a plumber, Max encountered and battled Gilgax several times before thinking he was rid of him by literally attaching him to a nuke then shooting him into his own ship, which was thought to not be a problem until after Max retired. But due to fate, we find his grandson, the protagonist, Ben 10, attached to the very watch Max's greatest enemy always coveted, forcing Max to make a pseudo comeback from retirement. All this while still trying to enjoy his summer road trip with his grandchildren. With Max's intro out of the way, I'd like to really pose the question, how is Grandpa Max capable of doing all the things we see him do? How is he so powerful? Or even how skilled? Keep in mind, Max Tennyson is a normal human being, despite being the grandsire towards two of the universe's strongest beings. However, as you're about to find out, Grandpa Max is often shown to damn near be superhuman. From lifting impossibly heavy objects to moving and taking damage that should honestly have killed a 60-something year old man. Max has headlocked and tussled with several of Ben's villains including Animo, 66, Hex, The Great One's followers, Rojo, and so on and so forth, along with having once put the Mayan god of death in a headlock. One moment of crazy strength is when Max lifted, I assume, a piece of rebar with concrete on the end. This pole compared to Max's size looks over 8 feet long, with the concrete on the end had to be at least heavier than Grandpa Max. He, with slight effort, swung this makeshift club with enough speed and precision he shattered one of the animated gargoyles Hex brought to light. He's strong enough to carry several unconscious people at once and backflip a DNA alien into a table behind him hard enough to break it. And Max was even shown managing to hold off a high breed commander with a long piece of metal. And this additional with other creatures throughout the series shows Max is incredibly skilled in close quarters. His hand-to-hand -hand combat skills has actually bested superpower villains like Zumbozo's minion Thumb Skull, and Max's actual combat ability speaks for itself as he even participated in the Plumber's Helper's assault against Vilgax and did better than Manny Pierce and Hell. Though an old man, Grandpa Max has shown countless times he's still more in shape than your average 25-year-old. In Classic Ben 10, we see Max performing nigh Olympic level movement and commonly Max is dodging debris, high speed objects and even reacting to lasers which in the world of cartoon scaling, you know, puts him in the light speed range. But for practicality's sake, we see Grandpa Max's intuition, reaction speed is also fast enough to not only dodge Albedo's webs in the form of Spider Monkey, but fast enough to strike him with a frying pan and disappear from the camper within seconds. Max's biggest strength is likely derived from his past. His personal standards of ethics we can call them as he stated in the Air Force that his insubordination yeah. was due to incompetent On the other leadership. Hand, you've been cited repeatedly for insubordination. Only when my commanding officers were wrong. And if he had a job he was there to get it done. Whether wanting to finish old missions, permanently solve his villain issues, or best showcase, when he fights for something he believes in or has someone to protect like Verdona, we see an odd sense of honor, but I like to say it's more of a sense of obsession. And this can best be seen when it came to finding the ultimate weapon before Enoch. This very obsessive, almost stubborn mannerism is something we can see passed down to his grandkids. When Ben or Gwen set their hearts on something, they will even come to blows with family. This exact statement being back backed up by the ultimate Kevin dilemma, where Gwen would do anything to protect Kevin and get him back, and Ben had set his sights on taking Kevin off the map because of the danger he posed. And Grandpa Max in this situation actually called Ben, even in recovery, to tell them that he was right in his decision to take out Kevin, showing the obsessive yet heroic mindset he had instilled in Ben. In Gwen's case, when it came to trying to help Kevin, she did her absolute best, even putting herself in danger from Ben, Kevin, or even her stalker, Michael Morningstar, and was the one who initially went to Grandpa Max to get him to talk Ben down. 
and it even turns out that Grandpa Max even stood against Kevin. And while I'll admit that he obviously could not have defeated Kevin, he did give him a decent run for his money until Kevin started adapting. Ironically, we see Max in his youth is a lot like Ben. In the classic episode, Don't Drink the Water, where Max is reverted back to the age of 10, he displays a playfully rude nature not unlike Ben's, strengthening the similarities that this family shares. Wrapping up, Max did come out of retirement to take his position of Magister of Earth once again, but that's Omniverse and one day we may unpack that unnecessary reboot. But whether it's dispatching wisdom and making memories with the next generation or coming out of retirement to remind the baddies exactly who he is, Grandpa Max, Max Tennyson was and always will be one of the kindest TV icons and perhaps one of the most abnormally powerful old people we'll ever see again. Thanks for tuning in to another episode at the Psych Ward, everybody. Stay sane and stay safe.